All right, we're going to do something a little different today. We're on the job site, and we're going to learn a little bit today about what is a CT or CAT scanner. And uh, any of you that have had a CAT scan done may recognize this. Um, let's go over the parts a little bit. Basically, it's a piece of x ray equipment, and this part that you're looking at right here, this whole big part here is called the gantry. Um, a lot of you call it the donut because there's a donut hole. That's where the patient goes. Uh, we actually have a image quality phantom mounted up on the table right now. This part right here we call the cradle, which is the table. It can go up and down and it can drive the patient in and out of the bore. And we'll go a little bit about what's inside and how it works here in a little bit. If we look in through the window, we can actually see the operator's console and the operator's booth. And we have a piece of glass here, lead-lined glass, that uh, shields the operator from the radiation. Now, of course, the radiation takes place inside this gantry opening, or the bore, as we call it. And uh, as you can see, it's all uh, and you can see right here we have our laser alignment lights and you can see how that helps us to align the patient to the equipment All right. so we're going to take this apart we're going to do some work on it today and we'll go a little bit about what's inside and how it works. Alright, so this is the inside of the gantry and I just have the side cover off. And what you're looking at right now is the x-ray tube itself. And of course we did a little video on x-ray tubes a while back. But I think as you can see compared to my hand this is a massive x-ray tube. It goes from here all the way up to here. This is the, uh, the cooling system of the tube itself. So there's a radiator, oil hoses, oil pump, and it actually pumps the oil through the x-ray tube to cool it. These tubes get extraordinarily hot. The actual anode can get white hot in these things um, when this thing's running under full load. As you can see, there's your high voltage cables, which supplies up to 150,000 volts potential between the two. So we have the anode that can have up to positive 75 kV and the cathode up to negative 75 kV and the difference between the two is 150 kV. So that's a lot of power at up to one amp. Um, you can see the belt in here and that giant belt is driven by this gigantic electric motor you can see there and this is the rotating part of the gantry on the inside as we spin around you see this whole thing is a gigantic bearing and you can see down in here that looks out into the that's the window and that looks out into the patient area where the, inside the board that we were looking at. So if we come around here, you can see the other end. And there's the window. So we come back right around here. There it is. And the gantry actually rotates around the patient. So we have the x-ray tube. The x-ray tube fires through that port to the patient radiation penetrates the patient comes around to the other side and this is called the detector this great big whole area here you can see how large it is big curved area has all these power supplies large power supplies to drive it and if you notice there are 48 circuit boards in here and this is called your DAS 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 stands for data acquisition system or data acquisition subsystem. So what this is doing is 
x-ray passes through the patient. So it comes out of this slot here, which is the collimator. You can see it. The radiation passes through the patient in kind of a fan beam shape, goes through this end of the window, and strikes the inside of the detector. And we can see the detector up through here. Not much really to see. As it strikes the detector, there is an, a uh, material in there that we call a scintillator. The reason it's called a scintillator is it scintillates or gives off a light, a type of glow, when radiation strikes it. So it's converting x-ray into visible light. That visible light is then converted, just like when we had our talk about detectors, DR, is converted into an electrical signal. It's amplified by this DAS and converted into raw image data. Okay, so the raw image data then goes through some circuit boards which are, uh, let's see, actually on this machine there's not much circuitry. Basically goes up through this mess here, this box, and then goes through a slip ring which is if you look at this back here, see how it's kind of curved? Inside there is a slip ring, and it's just a cylindrical metal tra set of metal tracks with brushes. And those signals go through these wires here to that slip ring, picks it up, goes out into that computer in there. And the computer then takes the information, all that raw image data, and converts it into an actual CAT scan image. So if you look at this part here that's coming around, there's two of them. These are your high voltage generators. So you have one for the anode. So if you look here, this one's got a plus on it. That's your anode side. So that's your plus 75,000 volts. This is actually a transformer, a high voltage, high frequency transformer and this is the actual inverter circuit that drives the transformer. If you go all the way around, you come to this one, it's identical looking, and this would be your cathode tank, or your negative. Okay, same thing, there's your inverter generator. This great big circuit right here contains all the circuitry to drive the rotating anode inside the x-ray tube as we talked about on our x-ray tube video. So that's a little idea of what's inside of a CT gantry. Now we'll fire it up. Look. Another thing I forgot to mention is this machine, we talked about slip rings because there is this has slip ring technology, meaning all of the signals on the non-rotating side of the gantry go through those slip rings and brushes to get to the rotating side of the gantry. So there's no physical wires connected between this rotating part and the stationary part of the gantry. So everything goes through those slip rings inside here. I'm not going to take it apart. The slip rings, the brushes are made of beryllium. Beryllium is carcinogenic. The dust from the beryllium is not good for you if you're not wearing gloves and a, and a dust mask and so forth. And when we, when we do the service on the slip rings to clean them, we have to dress accordingly for that. You have to have a special vacuum cleaner and so forth. But anyways, in the old days, the original CTs were called Rotate Rotate. Okay. There was even a one before that called Rotate Translate, but we won't talk about that. Rotate, rotate. And what those ones had was right here where that belt would be, behind it, there was actually a big cable take-up spool. And these high voltage cables, there was no generator on the slip ring or on the rotating part of the gantry. The generator sat somewhere in the room. And these high tension cables were very long. They were like 100 feet long. 
and they would wind around a spring, like a clock spring looking thing, and they would wind around that spring so the gantry could rotate 360 degrees roughly in one direction, a little bit more than that. Then it would have to, and it would wind the cables up around that take up. Then it would reverse, and when it would do its next scan, it would spin the opposite direction and take the next slice. Then it would rotate the clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise. And of course, you can imagine how many of these wires would break and wear out. So we were forever changing cables because they would, they would break from flexing back and forth. Once the slip ring technology came out, the gantry rotates continuously while it's energized and working and they just turn the x-ray on and off, turn everything on and off as they need, but the gantry just keeps rotating and rotating much faster and it even allows a type of scanning called helical which means it does a corkscrew pattern around the patient so the table drives as the gantry is rotating and it actually does a spiral, almost like a spiral sliced ham of the patient and then the computer does all the magic to turn it into images. So let's take a look at this and see what it looks like all fired up. Okay we just started the gantry up but we're not going to make any x-ray. Now we have to stand back out of here because you don't want to be in the axial zone. But as you can see that spins pretty fast. It's only running at about half speed right now actually go a little bit faster than that. But you can imagine this thing weighs almost a ton. You can imagine what that would be like, how dangerous that is. So just to give you an idea of what it looks like and from the patient's perspective that's what it looks like going around you if you were inside the gantry. Okay. So let's stop this for right now. Okay, we just stopped it. And you hear the brakes kick on. All right. And of course, there it is all stopped. Okay. So let me put this brace back on so we can actually do some things. And if you look over here, this little box here on the floor is called your PDU or power distribution unit. And if we lift that up, this box here is the servo that actually drives that giant motor that rotates the gantry. Okay? Right there, for everybody to see and touch, if you're not careful, is 750 volts DC at a lot of amps. And that provides all the power for the high voltage and for all so forth and so on. Very, very dangerous. Never, ever touch any of this stuff. Try to work on it unless you're factory trained. This is, uh, have to make a little disclaimer on this because this is not a toy. This is uh, a lot of high voltages, a lot of mechanical things, a lot of power, very dangerous, a lot of pinch points. Okay, so let's go back here and let's do a tube warm up. Not much to see with that, but we'll come over here and we'll just tell it we want to warm up the tube. And warm up the tube. So it comes up here, and as you can see, the start scan button comes on. If we hit the button, and it's now making radiation. So now that x ray tube is not only is the rotor inside the tube spinning, but the gantry is rotating. So the whole tube is rotating inside the gantry, as we saw. And it is taking x ray exposures. If you look right now, it's taking an exposure of 100,000 volts, 80 milliamps, for 10 seconds. That's a lot of power. Now it's shooting 120,000 volts at 120 milliamps. That's 0.12 amps. 
for 10 seconds. And last, 120 at, at two tenths of an amp for 10 seconds. So, a lot of energy. All right. So I'm going to do a few things here and maybe we're going to set something up and take an x-ray and see what it looks like. Yep. Okay, so while this thing is doing a little self-calibration here, we're, we're actually calibrating the machine. Um, we're going to look at the inside of the console here. So if you go down here, hold on a second. So if you look down here, there's not a whole lot to look at. As you can tell, it just uses a regular computer, and then it has a couple of special computers, okay? And not getting into specifics about manufacturers or anything, but basically you have a computer that handles all the software that pretty much runs the machine, and then these other little computers up here, their main job is to take that raw data that we talked about and convert it into a visible picture or an image. Um, it requires an incredible amount of computing power. So these are special computers that all they do is one function. They have one function. Take raw data, turn it into a picture. These computers can't do anything else but that one job, but they do it very well and they do it very, very quickly. The old CT scanners, if you did one slice, one picture, one image, it could take up to 10 to 15 minutes to get one picture. This thing here can actually do it real time. As the gantry is rotating around the patient, the image is reconstructing into a, a picture real time. So there's no delay. It's that fast. And without getting into too many details about CT, um, I get too out of hand here, but CTs now have multiple slices that they can take more than one slice at a time. So this, for instance, is an older machine, but it's a four slice. It can do four slices at once instead of one. So that means it takes four pictures um, at each, each rotation around the patient. So just to give you a little idea, so you basically have your regular computer that, that runs the machine. Pretty simple. It's a PC and then your data acquisition computer or your array processor. There's many different titles they give this, um, but basically that's what it does. As you can tell, there's a little power supply down there and some things. Other than that, not much that goes on inside of a CT today. Uh, when I first got into this line of work, <laughs> the, this part that's down in the desk used to be in a closet that was air conditioned and it was bigger than this whole room huge and it was a basically a, almost a mainframe computer it took to do that now we can do it with a desktop computer that's how much how much things have progressed so while this is continuing I'm gonna turn off here and then uh, I'm gonna come back when we can actually take some images of some things okay so we have the uh, phantom holder mounted up to the front of the table and we have a uh, water and resolution phantom on there. And we're going to center it up. We have the light on, the laser light on right now. And we're going to align the phantom into the bore of the gantry. So let's come around here. And let's go ahead and move this in. So now is the tricky part. I'm going to move it in until we see the laser line up. Where's our laser at? Right there. See there? So we've got to come in. And we're almost there. So drive it in real slow. And go ahead. Right about there. Stop. So about another, you know, that's, that's pretty good. Now we got to do up and down. As you can see, we're way off. So let's see here. That's a pretty good guess. Okay, 
and we are on. A little bit more? Nope. So we're there. It's hard to see. Yeah, this laser is not real, not real bright. Okay. So now we're going to set that as our internal landmark. So you hit the little button. Nope, the other one. Yep. And that's going to take us to our internal landmark. So that's telling it that this is the starting point for our scan. Okay. And let's see here. Just for something fun. Let's just throw our laptop computer up there. Sorry about the camera moving around here. So we're going to put our laptop and we're going to x-ray that too. Okay, lights off. We're all set to go. So we'll go in and we'll be right back. Okay, so our first thing that we're going to do is called the scalp scan. And that's going to be a flat x-ray of the patient. So we're going to move the table. The table's going to drive. And it's going to move into its starting position that I programmed it to. Then hit the x-ray button and it's going to take an x-ray. And it's x-raying right now. And there is your view. Okay. So what we see is an x-ray of, there's your phantom, this is a sideways view of it. And there's the side of my laptop computer. There's the holder assembly that holds the Phantom. Okay, so what we're going to tell it now is that we're happy with that. And the next thing it's going to do is it's going to ask us what we want to x ray. So here's what I want to x ray right here. So I'm dragging this box. Each one of these sets of dotted lines is one slice of an image. So it's now, it's going to take a slice this way out and then rotate it towards you like this and show it as an actual image, okay? Now this first x-ray was taken with the stationary x-ray tube. In other words, the tube's not spinning around the patient. It's sitting sideways to the patient. Now the gantry is going to rotate for this x-ray. So I'm going to confirm this. I'm going to tell it to go ahead and I'm going to move the bed back into its correct position. I'm going to hit x-ray and it's now going to start taking the exposures. Let's see if I can get this all in the picture. Now you can see we're getting to the phantom holder, and now pretty soon we're going to come to the phantom. Here we go. Okay, and there it is. Now we can end the exam. And let's go back through, see if we can go back over here. See if I can scroll through these, if it will let me. Wait, we'll be right back. All right. So. What you're seeing now is just the image of just the water. So that looks like water. And if you look here, see these numbers right here that are moving around? The V stands for the value, the Hounsfield value. So water 
has a value of zero, roughly. So if this thing's calibrated perfectly, no matter where I move it here, it should be somewhere around zero. So you can see as I move the cursor around, as long as I stay in the water, it's always staying near zero, plus or minus. And air has a Hounsfield value of a thousand. So if I move out into the air, you can see I'm 995, 993, near negative 1000. So negative 1000 is air, zero is water. So what this tells us is this is a properly calibrated machine. Okay, um, Everything's referenced to air and water. So any kind of tissue, so dense tissue, whatever, it's going to be relative to water and air. Okay, If we scroll down through these images, let's go the other way, you can see some of the, uh, there's an acrylic block with some holes in it, and you can see the smaller the hole, the harder it is to image. So a properly calibrated machine, you can see that. So this represents things that you would see in a patient. So there's resolution phantoms. Okay, so that checks for um, actual resolution, spatial resolution. And then we're out of here and getting into all the fun stuff, like that metal. <laughs> and there's our laptop computer. And of course we can change the contrast. just kind of adjust the contrast but it gives you an idea of how it works so these are these are the slices okay and there you go and there's different contrast settings okay so there's an idea of how a CT works and you kind of saw basically how to take an x-ray, how to take a CT of a patient, and how it works. And this is basically what they're seeing when they x-ray you. So again, just to put this into perspective, here's that phantom with the water in it. If we come out to the room and we walk around the side of the machine and to the opposite side of the machine, the back part, you can see our you can see our phantom here, and you can see right in there that first block we came to, which was the holes, and then behind it was your resolution block. So the x-ray actually, even though it's the, the gantry is going from this perspective to you, it's actually taking that slice this way and then displaying it to us flat on like this. So that's what a CT does computed tomography. Alright, hope you learned a little bit from this. I hope you found it interesting and uh, more to come later.